Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to find the two turning points of this curve here and then afterwards we're going to determine whether each of those are either a maximum or a minimum turning point. If you don't know how to differentiate or if you haven't seen my other video on how to find a turning point, I do suggest you watch those first, afterwards this lesson will seem a lot easier. So when you find a turning point, what you need to do is differentiate. Because when you differentiate or find dy by dx of a curve, you're working out the expression for the gradient of a curve. And when you have a minimum point or a maximum point, the gradient is always zero at those points. Okay, so from there, you can solve an equation to work out the coordinates. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start by finding dy by dx. I'm going to differentiate that curve. So what you need to do is look at the power on the first term of x. So it's cubed, it's three. And you need to multiply that number by one. We've got one x cubed here. Three multiplied by one is three. And then the power on the x decreases by one. So three minus one is two. Sorry, it's a bit windy in my garden today. So now we've got 3x squared. I've differentiated the first term. For the next part, exactly the same idea. Look at the power of x and multiply that by the number directly in front of x squared. So 2 multiplied by negative 6 is negative 12. And just like before, the power decreases by 1. So 2 minus 1 is just 1 except we don't usually write the power of one, we can just leave it as x, okay, it's the same thing. When you differentiate a number like this, it just goes to zero. So we've already differentiated that equation. This is the expression for the gradient of the curve that I was talking about, okay? Because the gradient is not fixed on a curve, it's always changing, so we've got an expression instead. Remember I said the gradient is always zero. So we need to put this expression for the gradient equal to zero. And then we need to solve the equation. So there's more than one way of solving. I'm going to solve by factorizing. So I need to look for the highest common factors in these two terms. So three is the highest common factor in three and 12. And x is the highest common factor if we look at the letters x. Then. If I open my brackets, inside the brackets, I should have x minus 4. Again, if you're not sure about factorising and solving quadratics, have a look at my other lessons and this will seem a lot simpler. So my two values of x are 0 or positive 4. Because this expression is equal to 0, which means either this is equal to 0, so x must be 0, and this is a number, or the brackets are equal to zero, and this is a number. Because when you times a number by zero, the answer is always zero. And if the brackets equal to zero, x should be positive four, because four take away four is zero. Okay, so we found the x coordinates. Now we have to work out the y coordinates. To work out the y coordinates for the turning points, what you need to do is just substitute these values of x back into the original equation. So let's start with x is zero. If x is equal to zero, we find y by cubing x, then minus six x squared plus 16. I'm changing these two values of x to zero, okay, because x is zero. So we've got zero cubed minus six, lots of zero squared plus 16. I know these are zero, I'm just showing all of my working out, it's a good habit to get into. And so y is positive 16. So one of the turning points lies at 0, 16. Okay, so we found one of them already. For the other one, we're just going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to substitute in our second value of x, 4. So if x is equal to 4, y is equal to Remember, we're substituting 4 into here, here. So we've got 4 cubed, gosh, it is a bit windy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, then we've got minus 6 lots of 4 squared plus 16. Okay, so you can 
work that out in your head. Maybe you're allowed to use a calculator in your exam. When you work it out, you should get negative 16. Okay, so we found the second point or the second turning point, the coordinates for the second turning point. Okay, so next we need to work out, are these lying at a maximum or a minimum point? Okay, so we're nearly finished. In the last part, remember we worked out the coordinates of our two turning points here. Okay, and now we need to work out whether each of those are a minimum or a maximum turning point. So, in the first part of the question, we worked out dy by dx. So we differentiated this equation to find the x squared minus 12x. To work out whether the points are either maximum or minimum, you need to differentiate again. So, usually you would write instead of dy by dx, d2y by dx squared or d squared y by dx squared. So you just differentiate this expression, okay? You differentiate a second time. So remember to differentiate, you take the power on the x, you multiply it by the number in front, so 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. This number decreases by 1, so 2 take away 1 is just 1. So we're left with x to the power of 1, or just x, okay? Remember, x to the power of 1 and x, they're the same thing. Then if I differentiate minus 12x, remember there's a 1 here that we don't usually write. 1 multiplied by negative 12 is negative 12. This would change to a 0. But remember, x to the power of 0 is equal to the number 1. And if you times this by the number 1, it just stays the same. Okay, so this is gone, and we're left with negative 12. So next, what you need to do is substitute your x values that we found earlier into this expression. Okay, so let's start with this turning point here. So x is equal to 0. If I change x to zero here, it becomes six times zero is just zero, and then if we take away 12, we're left with negative 12. Because this is a negative number, we know that this turning point is a maximum. Okay, so if that answer is a negative number, it means it's a maximum turning point. Now let's do the same thing for the other x value. So instead of doing 6 times 0 minus 12, we're doing 6 times 4, okay? Because the x value is 4. And if we work that out, 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. Take away 12 is 12. So this time, it's a positive number. And if it's a positive number, it means that it's a minimum point. 